Hi, this is Justin G0KSC of the g0ksc.co.uk website and in of antennas. Some of you may have also recognize me from uh, the ARRL antenna book and also Dubus magazine where some of my work has been published there. Uh, please do view some of the videos that have been prior to this one in case this is the first that you're watching. It would be good for you to get to, to grips with 4NEC2 uh, and understand the basics. Today we're going to go into optimization of a Yagi antenna, so there might be some gaps that need to be filled for you. So please do that. Also, if you have any questions about this video or any of the others, please do ask the questions uh, below and I'll do what I can to help them. And it may also provide me with sources of new information or um, new videos that people need to see to answer um, new sources of information. So we'll see. Um, okay, we're gonna go back to the uh, the last file that we were working on, 5.nec, as it is now. And we're gonna go into the editor to have a look at uh, the symbols that we've set so far. And changing over the other uh, element parameters that we had from numbers into symbols. So I'm going to do each of these in turn. Uh, I'm going to show you how to change the rest of the elements and then I'll skip forward a piece um, and then I'll do the uh, the boom positions as well so that we can come back and, and look at the optimizer. So first off we can see in the Y window if we uh, view the antenna here from a 3D perspective so we can see it and we can see it's above ground at the moment in the 3D window. Um, and then <clears throat> we can view the antenna in a two dimensional view here. Uh, and I'm clicking and holding the mouse button and then moving the mouse around to make that do what it's doing there. Uh, we can see that we have the Y axis along here. So that's going to be element lengths are going to be based on what's in the Y axis and there's Y1 and Y2. The reason there's Y1 and Y2 is because this Y axis that runs along here Y1 will be one side of it, Y2 the other. And then the X axis are the boom positions. You can see now that the X line is running in the same direction as the elements there. So of course this will be 0 here, um, 314, the next one, 816 and so on. So that's how uh, that's all configured there. In the last one, we went into the symbols. And if you, you're not sure what the symbols are, please do look at the last video in order to uh, establish what they are. Uh, we've set the height as H, and at the moment it's 15 meters above ground. The reflector's length or half length is in there, and also the direct or driven elements half length is already set. So what we would need to do now is change this one which will be the first of the directors wire six so we've got d1 d2 d3 so this will be d1 d2 d3 so if we change this to uh, d1 and this one to d1 so we've got um, both sides of um, the antenna um, that would be seen here we'd go into the symbols window and press D1 equals 1.402 and this would be director 1 and really this is just a comments window so that we can refer easily back to what each one of these should be so that's going to be 1357 uh, so D2 and then D2 and we go back here and set D2 equals 1.357 uh, and direct 2. Go back to the geometry window and then D3 is going to be 12.98 and into back into the symbols D3 equals 1.298 and then label that as director three. So you can get the idea where we're going with that one. What I will do is I'm just gonna set the first of the reflectors. Now we can call these symbols, these symbols can be whatever you want them to be. It's a good idea to have them set as something that you can easily remember uh, and has some form of reference towards 
the the part that they play within the antenna. Obviously, as we are with the elements, RE for reflector, DE for driven element, and then D1, director one, D2, director two, and so on. So maybe it's a good idea to have the reflector at say BRE, boom, reflector position, something like that. So let's choose that for the moment. We'll put that as BRE um, as the director position, or sorry, the, uh, the boom position. BRE equals zero at the moment. And then um, reflector boom position. So I'll carry on doing these and we'll skip past as we need to. Okay, so now we have all of these entered into field. So let's just recap on the geometries window and how that looks and differs now. Um, all of the X window positions here, when we look at the antenna in view, you can see the line, the green line, which is X. So all of these X positions represent the element positions along this axis. And, in, and for these positions, we have BRE representing boom at reflector position, BDE representing um, boom position of driven element one, because of course we where we have a, a loop, we have two parts to that loop on the boom. So the first one is driven element position one. The second one is driven element position two, which you can see here, BDE2. Then we have BD1, which is boom director number one. That's this first position. Then boom director uh, two, boom director three, which are these two here. But of course, there's no numbers there. They've all been changed. And when we go into the sec or the uh, the symbols window, you can see that we're telling the software that BRE is zero, BDE equals 0 0.31 meters or pre pre 0.314 meters, BDE two equals 0.866 meters, BD one equals 1.38, and so on. Uh, and then we have notes listed here which tell us what each of those positions are for. Uh, y axis, which is the element, the element lengths, all minus is on this side. If we assume minus is to the left of the um, the x going y this way, and then the positives on this side. And likewise, RE for reflector, DE for the width of the driven element, uh, D1 for uh, the width of the director one, director two, director three, and all of the numbering for those in the respective places here. Uh, just on these number two through five, it looks a bit higgledy piggledy there because you've got BDE twos on this side and mainly BDE ones. Let's just talk through this for a moment. The the, the second wire, if it's uh, the radius is six point three five, it's two times that, so it's half inch. So that's the one of these main sections that runs this way on the driven loop. The second one is BDE2 where it's a 6.35 on both sides which is half inch once you've uh, um, times that by two which is the front piece and then these two here uh, the reason it says BDE2 here and BDE1 there is because it's the loop ends joining those two together and that's a smaller diameter that's in the, the, the 3 8 ends so that those can slide in uh, the ends here. I'll put a, a picture also on here for you now so that you can see how one of those loop ends would look on a smaller antenna but it means that we can zoom in and see exactly how that trombone type section would look on a, a finished LFA Yagi. <clears throat> so now we've, we've got all these symbols added for the boom positions and the element widths. We can now save those as they are uh, just as a sanity check I'm going to run a, a polar plot to make sure that everything looks okay uh, and how it should do. And once we've uh, done that, we can see that that's the same as what it was before. And then we just run a SWR sweep just to make sure that that still looks all as it should do. Um, and we can see that pretty much we've got our um, SWR plot as we had before. Bearing in mind that we're still using the NEC2 engine for this part at the moment. <clears throat> uh, 
rather than the NEC4, which is what you, you, you would be having with yours. Um, in most instances, that is. OK, so into the calculate, let's start the optimizer. Um, and we're going to need to close this window first. So open the optimizer. Um, and this perhaps looks rather daunting, but there's a couple of main sections. The first one is all the variables, which are your symbols, which now appear in these windows here. Uh, the next bit is the weighting, and this is what's very important. Uh, the problem's been with the, the Yagis that we've had over the last 20 years since optimizers have been available is the misuse of these parameters. Um, many times the weighting is heavily put on gain uh, and the, the easiest and the quickest route to gain is just to extend the boom. So what the optimizers have been doing is moving the distance wider between the first and the last element, the reflector and the last director. Altering the spacing and, and sizes of all the elements in between to get some sort of nice SWR or looking SWR or some sort of dip and then make it wider again. So generally, they're far too wide spaced, uh, they're very narrow band and as a result very twitchy and end up with also what we call ski slope parameters in, in the front to back and gain. So best front to back is at the bottom of the operational range and it slopes down and gets worse towards the top end. And then gain is best here at the top end and slopes down and gets worse towards the bottom end. The ideal Yagi will have all of those leveled out and have a nice flat SWR, which is how the LFAs look. So you've got pretty much the same predictable gain all the way through and the same front to back all the way through. And if we have a look on the sweep of this one, uh, again on the, uh, the frequency um, sweep for SWR, and now switch to gain and front to back, you can see that the gain is pretty much flat all the way across from 50 to 50.5. There's hardly any change. And although there is some change in front to back and, and uh, <clears throat> uh, front to rear, you can see that it's, it goes from 30 dB at the bottom of uh, the, this section up to around 32, stays around 30, comes back down to 30. So between 50 and 50.2, it's over 30 dB front to back. And then at the top end, it's just around 24 dB front to back. So still very respectable up at 50.5. But really, uh, the fun factory is from 50.35 down to 50. That's, you know, all of your data and everything else. So it's well above 25 dB front to back all the way through that um, operational part of the band. So um, into the calculator, the, the, the start optimizer, weighting is really important. The best thing to do, is, in my opinion, Gain, ironically, is the last thing to be lost. Put as much, in the early optimization stage, as much weighting as possible onto the tuning, SWR, because once that's embedded into the model, that's very difficult to lose. And then we can make some more aggressive adjustments elsewhere as we go on through the optimization process. But get that high and get it flat to start off with. Add an amount of front to rear in there, so it's got to um, look at the whole rear end to reduce that and see how we go, uh, see what the result is. You can see on here on the theta, which is the, the horizontal um, lobe that we're looking at, it's 84 rather than 90. Again, if we were to look at the, the, the sweep, the two dimensional sweep as to what the result is and how that looks, this 90 point would be where we want to see uh, the, the maximum uh, gain or the performance in front to back being measured from. However, because at the moment this antenna is above ground, the point where the highest level of gain is at the moment is around 84. So the software has picked that up and, and chosen that for us. So if I now remove it so that it's uh, not going to be um, uh, above ground, it's going to be a free space model. I'll check that again and do the, the plot. This will also speed up the optimizer, optimizer which is going to be very slow. Um, now, when we go into the optimizer, we need to shut, slide this down first and start optimizer in the calculator window. We can now change that to 90 uh, with confidence. So at first, and just for point of exercise, let's just select each of the element lengths. So all of the boom positions will stay where they are. Um, and it's just the element lengths that we're going to adjust. 
and then we're going to um, press start on the optimizer with it optimizing at 50 uh, 50.150 we can and would do this as a frequency sweep so make it over a wider area um, but at the moment just to get you going on the optimizer SWR set to 80 uh, out of a figure of merit 20% uh, left for front to rear and press start now this is not something that you're going to get done in two minutes it's going to take a little while to do uh, and this is going to each iteration as it goes uh, is going to take you can see 10 or 15 seconds so this is probably something that you would need to run overnight uh, and see what the results are going to be so we're giving that some time to to run um, and we can see here it gives us the parameters as we're running each iteration here uh, and where it's at um, and what it's what it's been doing and you can see some of these the SWR there are 6.6 .6, where it's made an adjustment which has really messed things up and then gone backwards again so <clears throat> that's the the final SWR position in each for that position that it's been testing this is how the the plot looks it will change the plot as we go along and you can see in the gain fields the differences that it's making whether there's an improvement or a break front to back front to rear um, and then the impedance um, settings also interestingly the uh, radiation efficiencies as well which you can see is varying slightly up and down but this will take much much longer to, to run so in initial stages if you do something along the lines that I've done here setting very high for SWR uh, a low factor for front to rear leave the game where it is at, at zero you can experiment with that and what I would suggest that you do is it is going to take a while but just do something fairly simple like this um, it might be that you could run this overnight see what it comes out to and then the next day run it again but change SWR to 20 and front to rear to 80 so that you can get an idea as to the variations and how how far the optimizer will run uh, and, and go either way once you've done that um, you could put the um, maybe a, a boom position or two in there as well but if you just lumped all of the boom positions all of the element positions um, maximum gain you're going to get what every other person and company has produced in the terms of, of Yagi's without being anything any different uh, or, or special the main parameters that you need to look at is keeping everything flat over a very wide range uh, including gain front to back and everything else as well we're at 18 minutes so I've overrun again so hopefully this one will go up uh, okay without uh, without any issues thanks again please subscribe any questions below uh, any suggestions for other videos let me know and I'll be on it thanks again all the best